Well, it must be Saturday night, and uh, we are here, of course, at 2GB Radio City on a Saturday. Good to have your company. Uh, my name's Glenn Wheeler, and uh, we'll be here right through until midnight tonight. If you'd like to uh, be a part of the program at some stage between now and midnight, then just pick up the phone and give us a call, 131873. Or indeed, uh, drop us a note via the email 2gb.com. We'll uh, open the clubhouse shortly with thanks to our mates at 50 Up. Uh, my kitchen after 7, 7 to 8 o'clock. And um, tonight on My Kitchen, we're going to, um, we're actually going to do a number of things, but we're going to have a bit of a chat about preservatives and additives. Because last week on the show, we had a bit of inquiry about uh, people wanting to know, you know, what are the, the preservatives and the additives that are in foods these days that we need to be aware of? And uh, Bloomy gave us a little bit of a heads up, but. We've got Sharon Natoli, who's a nutritionist, going to join us to uh, uh, talk more about all of that. And you may have some questions as well in relation to uh, specific food types and uh, additives and preservatives and all that sort of stuff. That's after 7. And then after 8 o'clock tonight, uh, Wheeler from 8 till midnight and uh, a number of special guests and uh, all sorts of things to talk about, including a return of a couple of uh, very popular segments that we haven't done for a long, long time. What's your problem? which will be coming up after 8 o'clock. What's your problem? Which is, uh, it's always a fun segment. In fact, it, uh, it, become, it gets very busy. What's your problem? Simply put, uh, if you've got any sort of a, um, if you've got any sort of a problem, then just give us a call. Uh, it's not, no, it's not quite like that. It's uh, more about the fact that uh, maybe you've got a cleaning issue or you're trying to get hold of a particular product or uh, what did we have recently? We had um, somebody that was trying to buy tyres for a particular type of vehicle and couldn't get them anywhere. It, it could be the most outrageous uh, you know, out there sort of a problem that you've possibly got. Put it to our listening audience on a Saturday night because invariably we come up with answers. And indeed, um, we, we reward people for coming up with good answers as well. The other thing we'll do after 9 o'clock is uh, we'll have a session of uh, buy, swap and sell. Haven't done that for a long, long time either. So have a think about that. If you've got something sitting around the place that you need to offload, turn into a little bit of uh, handy cash and you can't be bothered putting it on one of the uh, internet sites and you just want to give us a call and sell it over the air, well, I'll tell you what, this could be just the place tonight, like a radio version of a garage sale. Buy, swap and sell coming up after 9 o'clock tonight. Righto, let's get cracking. Welcome to the Clubhouse on a Saturday night. Thanks to 50upclub.com. And now, here's your host with the most, Glenn Wheeler. Just gone seven and a half minutes after the hour of six o'clock on the clubhouse tonight. Uh, we're going to give you a bit of a heads up on a whole bunch of things that are happening all around Sydney. Um, places to go, things to do. In fact, uh, there's a new jazz club that's opened up not far from us here in Piermont, just up the road in Ultima. We're going to find out all about that. Foundry 616. Uh, we'll also catch up with uh, Sydney's premier uh, celebrity auctioneer uh, Damien Cooley from Cooley Auctions and we'll find out how the day went uh, in real estate another busy day I'm told uh, but of course thousands of 50 Up Club members have now taken up the club's special electricity offer some of them expect to save hundreds of dollars on their power bills and we've been telling you that a typical four person household that switches from the regulated tariff could save an estimated $490 in the next year by switching now the big group discounts of up to 17% off your entire bill are exclusive to 50 Up Club members. That's 17% off your entire bill for two years if you pay by direct debit or 15% off your entire bill if you pay on time by phone or internet with no exit fees or lock-in period. Now, there's even a discounted offer for solar customers with a bonus feed-in tariff. If you're not a member yet, and here's the thing, join now. You can still access the offer at 50upclub.com if you're in New South Wales, of course. For more details or to join, just log on now at 50 Club. Dot com, uh, or call Click Energy on 1300 085 785. Terms and conditions do apply and 50 Up Club, of course, as a referrer, receives commissions. During the week, I had uh, reason to go to uh, Bathurst. My youngest daughter, Abby, went to Charles Sturt University up there, fabulous university that it is, and Bathurst is a great city in itself. Always love visiting Bathurst. Beautiful place. Uh, got some great pubs, great bars. In fact, we visited one of them, the Church Bar. What a beautiful old building. It's a, it, was, it actually was an old church, and they've converted into a, a fabulous bar, hence the name Church Bar. Uh, we had a terrific time, caught up with some, uh, some good old friends from Bathurst, and um, on the way back... I had to meet somebody in Lura. 
So I detoured off the highway and uh, headed down into Lura Village. I haven't been to Lura for, don't know, I think years. I don't know how many years, but quite some years. And I was absolutely shattered. I was disappointed. And the reason I was disappointed was because I only had an hour to spend in Lura. I was on a, I was on a dead set uh, time limit. I had to meet somebody and I had to get back to Sydney. And I was disappointed because Lura has so much to offer. If you haven't been to Lura in recent times, let me tell you, the joint is looking fabulous and so much to do and so many beautiful little shops, restaurants, cafes, you know, retailers of all little knickknacks and crafty things and all sorts of beautiful things that, that could easily fill in not just a day, I reckon, but uh, several days. In fact, I got home and uh, the first thing I said to Michelle when I got home was, you know what we've got to do? We've got to have a couple of days getting away to Lura. Stay in a little B&B or somewhere like that. I've got Barry Jarrett joining us on the line because uh, Barry is the president of the Lura Village Association. I thought we'd better have a chat to him about the place. G'day, Barry. Yeah, g'day. G'day, Glenn. How are you tonight? I'm well. But, um, but you know, I was absolutely, as you would have heard me say there, I was absolutely disappointed that I only had an hour to spend in the joint because it's, it's looking fabulous. Thank you very much. Yeah, it, it is actually. Um, we're, we've been really fortunate. Um, we're further out west. They've had some incredible heat. And as you know, most of Australia's had the same. But... Uh, for some reason, I think um, somebody's sort of given us a bit of a reprieve because of all the, the crap that went down with the fires during mm. October. So, um, mm. so yes, thank you very much. So, <laughs> so how did? Let's talk about the, the fire impact first of all. How did that impact on you guys in Lura, business, uh, business well, wise? Much our our um, tourism and certainly our overseas tourism completely cancelled. Mm. Um, that uh, was something that we can't get back. Uh, our day trippers and our weekend. Um, people wanting to escape, that's, that's come back to us uh, after, after a while, I have to say, though. But, um, but you know, we're, as you found, you know, Lura's looks, looks fabulous. So, oh. you know, the word of mouth is spreading really quickly. So, um, so we've, we've got that on our side. And what, what I thought was, was quite uh, apparent to me, and look, I'm not a shopper. I get bored very quickly if I go into a... <laughs> If I'm in a Westfield complex and uh, yeah. I could count the number of times I'm in one of those big retail complexes in a year, I, I just hate them. Yep. Yeah. Uh, it's not my go whatsoever. Everything's the same. Um, you know, one shop just rolls into another, et cetera, et cetera. Look, that's, that's our point of difference up here. You know, the bo- boutiques that we have are just really good examples of very clever small business. Um, you know, yeah. they've, they've got personalised service and what the proprietors don't know about their genre or their, mm. their stock is, you know... <laughs> It's just incredible how much knowledge they have. Well, I always reckon that uh, the sign of a of a good retailer, particularly in uh, in regional parts and in uh, outlying towns, when you're away from the big city, mm. um, a measure of success is if you can get someone like me to walk into your shop first of all because I'm interested, yep, and then have a bit of a mosey around and then start thinking to myself, you know what, I'm going to buy that, and I don't really need it. <laughs> yeah, they're good, aren't they? That's good, <laughs> right? That's a that's a winning sign. That's good. Absolutely. I nearly bought a clock, an outdoor clock, from one of the shops. Yes. And uh, I've already got one on the wall at home, uh, outside in the you know the outdoor garden area sort of thing. And I saw this clock and I thought, gee, that'd be nice, yeah. you know. And then my mind said, oh, hang on, we've already got one of those. And I thought, yeah. but, but we haven't got one like that. I need to buy it. And then I, no, no, that, stop. that's the thing. They know how to display it and they know how to put it put it yeah. right, in, in, right in your mind. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. But then it was the cafes, and I went to one which was particularly lovely and had a, a lovely coffee there and caught up with uh, someone I had to meet. Mm-hmm. And then um, when I was finished with him, I wandered around and just looked in at some of the restaurants. There's some beautiful restaurants oh, there. Absolutely. Well, I mean, getting back to the coffee, uh, the coffee shops for a moment, um, one thing that you know you, you probably mightn't have noticed because you only went to one is that all the, um, all the city roasters are available up here. Yes. And I know how coffee yeah. people... You know, love their yeah. They their follow brand. their brands, yeah. yeah. Yeah, and we've also got some local ones up here. So you know, we really, we really sort of tap into the zeitgeist there as far as you know, coffee Nazis go. And um, you know, I have to speak speak for myself here. Good on you. <laughs> as an ex insider, <laughs> I um, I do like my coffee. It was one of the reasons why I moved <laughs> up here in the first place. What about uh, what about accommodation? Because I haven't looked uh, into that yet, but I'm guessing that there is uh, plenty on offer. Yeah. Well, I mean, like tonight is a great example because all the mist just rolled in. So the Valentine's weekend is just, it looks f- fantastic. And yeah. one of the best, or well, one of the, the things that we have on offer that, that is a bit unique is the fact that we have a, a huge array, array of, um, of self-contained cottages, um, beautiful sort of 
weatherboard cottages that are completely self-contained. Yeah, okay. um, and also you know, some really good B&Bs for those people who don't want to necessarily yep. do self-catering. Yeah. Yep, yep, yep. Uh, but, you know, from what I could gather, it's uh, it's a very easy place to sort of just go and camp for, uh, oh. for, for a night or two. And, oh, absolutely, um, Glenn. Look, it's a, it's a bit of a no-brainer escape, really. Yeah. You know, it's, it's an hour, like, literally between an hour and an hour and a half up the highway. Yeah. Um, and it's a world away, really. Yeah, absolutely right, and uh, and and really beautiful. And I'll tell you what, full marks too to whoever keeps the place clean because I was there at four o'clock in the afternoon and the joint was sparkling. Yeah, oh, thank you very much. Well, that's that's the LVA or the Lura Village Association of Local Chamber of Commerce. Um, mm. They actually pay to have the um, a contractor look after that in conjunction with the local council. So, well, you know, we we do take great pride. In, in our environs. Right. Uh, well, it was it really was looking uh, absolutely fabulous, and that's why I thought it was worthy of talking about tonight. Now, you've got a couple of um, festivals in particular coming up. You've got yeah. the Lura Harvest Festival coming up. Yeah, well, actually, that's... That's your inaugural, speaking isn't it? Speaking before about preservatives and, and additives, um, yeah, the, the whole idea of the, um, of the Harvest Festival is to... Um, is to tap into the sustainability uh, trend that's running right through the world at the moment with slow food and so forth. Um, that's very much uh, on our on our radar um, about you know sort of pre- I'm saying preaching, <laughs> but uh, but sort of letting everybody know about you know that there are alternatives to to the the you know the preservative laden food and yeah. so forth. That, yeah. You know there is. There is an alternative to that. You know, there is, you know, the fact that you can actually punctuate your diet without too much trouble with good, with, with good produce. Wholesome and, stuff. Yeah, and alternatives as far as resources go too. So that's the, uh, the Harvest Festival. Yeah. When, when is that on? That's on the 10th of May this, um, this year. Okay, 10th of May. So yeah. we, we'll make a diary note for that. We'll uh, talk about that a little um, bit closer to the event. Yeah, not a problem. Like the, um, we close off the mall. Um, you would have noticed that the the retail precinct is sort of runs between two roundabouts. Yep. Um, that that area is actually closed off to the to traffic to yeah, free okay. traffic. Nice. And we set up um, basically a fair concept. Um, Good. And that, yeah. Lovely. Yep. Very easy. And uh, you've got that 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 nice big uh, median strip in the middle with gardens and what uh, have you. And... Yeah. The cher- under the cherries. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, Fant- it's pretty Fant- iconic. Huh? It is. It's fantastic. <laughs> and uh, the other one uh, that is a lot of people would be familiar with, of course, is the uh, the Lura Gardens Festival. Oh yes, that's right. They're celebrating their fiftieth um, year this this year, so it's a big one. Okay. Um, that that'll be sort of pretty much international. Well, it's known internationally now, anyway. But uh, but yeah, that's a biggie for, for And that's later in the year, isn't it? That's correct. Yes, it, it runs between. Um, the first uh, first week in October, from the long weekend uh, through to the following weekend. Okay, terrific. So yeah, lovely stuff. Well, listen, thank you for chatting to us, Barry, and oh, um, pleasure, and uh, I reckon that there'll be a stack of listeners that'll probably even tomorrow say, you know what, let's get in the car and go yeah. to Lura. Well, you know what, we'll we'll welcome them with open arms too. Beautiful, good <laughs> okay. stuff. I'll be back as well. Don't you worry. Well, I hope you, I hope you have a chance to stay overnight. That's exactly what the plan is. Let me tell you, when I go to a place like that and I see so many uh, welcoming little cafes, knick-knack shops um, and restaurants, like that is, for me, that is the ultimate uh, little getaway for a weekend. I, I just think that's a wonderful way to spend a couple of days and, uh, yeah, we're definitely going to do it. Don't yeah. you worry. You should try living here. <laughs> well, that could be the next step, eh? Yeah. One step at a time, Barry. Thanks for talking to us. It's a pleasure, Glenn. Barry Jarrett there. Barry is the uh, the president of the Lura Village Association, and uh, I'll tell you what, they're doing a great job. If you haven't been to Lura in a long time, get up there and have a look at the joint because it really is sensational. Now, I think Elva's been to Lura recently, or she's got some memories to share with us. Hello, Elva. Oh, yes. I, I went to my granddaughter's ballet concert. In Lura. They went from Sydney yeah. up to Lura yeah. and performed in the outdoor concert. Beautiful. The outdoor area. Lovely. It was beautiful w- and hedges were their wings. Uh, and when was that? Uh, oh, look, it was years ago. Yeah, okay. And, and it's brought back all these lovely <laughs> memories. It was absolutely glor- a glorious night. A beautiful setting, a lovely audience and a lovely ballet. Oh, beautiful. Well, I'm glad that it's brought back some lovely memories for you, Elva, because let me assure you that the place is uh, looking sensational. And I haven't been there for uh, for a few years either, but uh, I'm looking forward very much to getting back up there and I would encourage anyone looking for uh, a reason to go up the Blue Mountains to uh, jump in the car and go up there for a day trip or uh, go and spend a couple of nights in one of their... Uh, self-contained places, as Barry was talking about, or uh, maybe a B&B. 20 minutes after 6, Saturday night, Glenn Wheeler. This is the Clubhouse.
Thanks to our mates at 50 Up Club. 2GB traffic thanks to Auto Jaguar with the new XF from 74,990 plus a unique finance offer. See, well, that's what we like about you. You're you're, uh, you're not just there to monitor the traffic. You're there to you monitor the program as well. And in fact, I heard uh, another great example of the great Ian Wallace at work during the week when um, you had a fire in your backyard almost. Crikey's. That sounded like it. In fact, I was in the car uh, that day. I was heading up to Bathurst, which I was uh, just talking about to to Barry Jarrett. Uh, I was heading up to Bathurst, and I heard you. Um, on the show here. Who are you talking to, Ben, I think, weren't you? Yeah. And what ha- happened? A, a power pole had fallen down or something? Well, the top of the power pole had collapsed on Epic Road and the wires came down. And once they hit the ground, they sparked and started... Ah, dear, oh dear. Caused a lot of chaos on the road as well, I should imagine. Oh, very yeah, all right, Wild, good on you. The great Ian Wallace there, keeping an eye on traffic and our program. It's a price frenzy right now at Beaumont Tiles. Yep, blockbuster bargains on really cool tiles from Australia's biggest in tiles and bathroom wear. Beaumont Tiles, there's a store near you. At Pain Away, it's about the pain, the whole pain and nothing but the pain. So if you have arthritic pain and want to improve your mobility, try Pain Away Glucosamine, 1500 milligram tablets and Pain Away Arthritis and Joint Support Formula Capsules. They are formulated not only to relieve the pain of arthritis but also to assist to reduce joint swelling and inflammation caused by arthritis. Available at all leading pharmacies, always read the label, use only as directed and if those symptoms do persist, see your healthcare professional. Pain Away. I wonder if I uh, go up and spend a night or two in uh, Lura, if I can find a restaurant that stocks De Bortley wine. I bet I could. I bet you I could, because they are everywhere. Uh, De Bortley, of course, are all over the country, and in fact, they're in many parts of the world. Do you know they export their wine to over 90 countries? That's an incredible success in itself. But they've been making beautiful wine since 1928. The De Bortley family, a third-generation Aussie family winemaker, so that's why we love having their presence here on a Saturday night, and uh, we support them because they support us. Hello, I'm Jonathan Welsh, and you may know me as the founder of the Choir of Hard Knocks, now known as the Choir of Hope and Inspiration, and more recently, Social Inclusion Week. My friends at Rotary have helped enormously in supporting many of my charitable projects, including Social Inclusion Week. If you can't join a choir, I reckon Rotary is the next most uplifting thing you can have in your life, and a great way to support your community. Rotary is humanity in motion, so visit Rotary at rotaryaustralia.org.au and join the conversation. You're listening to The Clubhouse with Glenn Wheeler on 2GB873. Thanks to 50upclub.com. Oh, there we go. It's uh, 20, 23 minutes after six. Why am I laughing? Because uh, we have so much fun on this program, and I often say it's what uh, goes on behind the scenes that's probably more fun than... And more interesting sometimes than what goes on uh, at the front of the shop. But anyway, uh, Janine is on the line. Hello, Janine. Hello, how are you? I'm well. I just wanted to tell you at a beautiful place we went to last weekend at Black Heath. Oh, yeah. And you can walk down to the Bridal Falls, but it's, uh, it's, un- it's in Airbnb, and it's, it's called Magpie Blue Cottage. Magpie Blue. And it's absolutely stunning. It's five-star, but it's just really comfy and it's got a beautiful garden and very close to all the walks. Magpie Blue Cottage in uh, Blackheath. Yeah. Right, I'll have a look at that. Amazing. Good, oh, I'll, I'll yeah. have a look at that. Thank you for that, Janine, because it's always nice to get a, a recommendation. Hello, Elaine. Oh, hello there. Yes, look, I was just inquiring as to the uh, the name of the uh, the units that you were speaking about there. Oh, well, Barry actually, were, that uh, Barry Jarrett was just talking about. Yes. He didn't right. actually give us the details of any uh, of any accommodation in particular, but you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to follow him up, and we'll do um, we'll do something next week on the travel show. Oh, good. That would be one. All right. So tune in. Uh, make sure you tune in it's Sunday mornings, nine o'clock, nine or ten o'clock. The travel show here on Two GB eight seven three. And next Sunday morning, I'll, I'll make sure during the week we actually follow Barry up and we'll get the details of a few B&Bs and we'll have a talk to a couple of the operators up there and, uh, and give everyone a bit of a heads up as to uh, where you can stay if you go up there to beautiful Lura.
Something else caught my eye uh, during the week, uh, and it uh, comes in the form of a barber shop, believe it or not, uh, Sweeney's. Sweeney's. Uh, why would a barber shop be um, something different? Well, because, you know, barber shops have changed over time, and I've said before that uh, there are some quirky barber shops around town. This one se- certainly sounds very interesting indeed. It's, uh, it's billed as a cut above the rest, 392 Military Road, Cremorne, And uh, as the writer on a website where I saw this said, having a haircut is something women usually anticipate with pleasure, being as much about the me time as as it is about the cut itself. Um, She goes on to say, it's time to read a magazine, enjoy a cup of coffee, chat with the hairdresser, feel pampered and come out looking and feeling better than we did when we walked through the door. For men and boys, it's often more of a cut and run experience. But that was before Sweeney's. So I thought we'd better find out more about Sweeney's. Marcus Rigby is the barber who's running this joint. It's only brand new, and he joins us on the line. G'day, Marcus. Hi, mate. How are you? I'm well. What are you, three weeks old? Yeah, three to three to four weeks now, nearly four weeks. And what's the uh, what's the concept? I mean, you're obviously very into retro. Yeah. Well, basically, we've, um, we're sort of, like I was thinking about all the new barbershops that you've got out there nowadays. Hmm. And um, it's sort of like what she said in the article. It's kind of just a cut and run kind of thing. And yeah. I, I quite like the old barbershop style. Because, so. you know, the, you, she's right when she says the writer is uh, is spot on because, you know, for, for many of us blokes, it's uh, it's just one of those necessities of life. I've got to get a haircut. Yeah. So you get in, you get out, and it's like, oh, quick, can we hurry up and get this thing done, you know, because I've got bigger and better things to do. Uh, but you've turned it into a bit more of an adventure by the sounds of it. Yeah, well, like the whole idea is we've got a bar opening up downstairs as well. Oh, now you're talking. Up. So um, <laughs> the idea is is you can... Go and get a whiskey and come up and get a like a cutthroat shave or and a haircut. Oh, how good's that? So we're yeah. take, we're taking it back to a to a a, a, a place in time when um, it was really an event for a bloke to go and uh, get uh, uh, zushed up to go and get the cutthroat shave, maybe have a glass of uh, wine or a whiskey as well, and yeah. um, make it a real little adventure. What does a haircut cost at uh, at Tweenies? Haircuts thirty dollars and a cutthroat's thirty five. So that's all right. What is the advantage of, of the uh, of the old cutthroat style shave? And I've never had one. I've often thought about going and getting one done just for the hell of it. What's the advantage? Well, you're going to have to come in and have one then. Well, maybe I should. But <laughs> the thought of some bloke standing there with a cutthroat razor on my face <laughs> just sends a bit of a chill up my spine. It, it must be a much closer shave, obviously, isn't it? It is. It's the closest shave you can get. And, um, you know, we sort of pamper the skin. It's kind of... It's kind of like a facial for a guy, really. Like, you get the moisturisers put on and the hot towels and everything like that, and it just sort of helps the skin, and it's, it's just you just feel fresh. Like, afterwards, you just feel really fresh. Maybe I need to come and have a go. Yeah, definitely come down. So is it is it better to have a... Uh, if you have the shave, if you have the cutthroat done, is it better to have a, a, you know, a good solid uh, day or two of stubble on there? Um, it doesn't really matter. You no? can have a long beard or... Hardly anything, really. Okay. Yeah. What's the uh, What's the popular cut of of the day? What are What are young blokes going with these days? What's the What's the go? It's all going back. It's all going back in time. It's everyone's sort of loving the really short sides and long on top, and maybe a bit slick back, which is um, always quite fun. It's funny, isn't it? Eh? The old uh, party on top and uh, what do they call it? Party on top, business on the sides. Yeah, it's something like I think it's business on the side, yeah. I've often heard it referred to, yeah. Uh, all right, well, listen, that uh, sounds interesting. Sweeney's at uh, Cremorne, upstairs at 392 Military Road, Cremorne. And from what I can gather, uh, you can go there and uh, spend a bit of time shopping downstairs. You've, you've got a bit of a, a kind of a village concept there. Yeah, we've got um, Bread and Butter Cafe, Yep. Um, which is out the back. And then we've also got a Warehouse 410, which is a furniture store. They do all sort of used and new furniture. And then... Uh, the pop up shop is a boutique clothing store upstairs as well. Fantastic. Good stuff. Well done. Good on you, Marcus. Uh, well, you never know. I might just drop by one day and uh, let you run that cutthroat razor over my face. Mind you, there'd <laughs> be a few, so. pe- few people listening now that would probably like to run it across my neck. But anyway, <laughs> thanks, mate. Thanks very much. Marcus Rigby, uh, Sweeney's Barber Shop at Cremorne, 392 Military Road, Cremorne, where you can get a haircut for 30 bucks or uh, get your. Um, your face shaved for uh, 35. Hmm. Don't know. Maybe I should. Maybe I should. Just the thought of the uh, the pampering and the moisturising and the hot towels and all the rest of it. Yeah. 
I'll give it a go. Uh, don't forget, too, we've got coming up a little bit later on tonight, we've got the uh, What's Your Problem segment and uh, also Buy, Swap and Sell. Now, uh, you can send through emails for uh, What's Your Problem, so just send them through via the 2GB website, 2GB.com. Any problem that you've got in relation to uh, anything at all, might be a cleaning issue, might be a problem you've got trying to uh, get hold of a uh, particular product or uh, uh, question in relation to um, finances, uh, superannuation, whatever it is. Whatever it is, What's Your Problem is a segment, and we'll be uh, hitting that up a little bit later on tonight, so you can email any questions through. And, of course, we'll open the phone lines up a bit later as well also. And Buy, Swap and Sell, which is like a radio version of uh, the Trading Post, really, uh, where you can um, flog off something that you've got sitting around the place that you no longer require and turn it into a little bit of handy cash on a Saturday night. How about that? 29 minutes to 7 o'clock here at 2GB873. My name's Glenn Wheeler. Lovely to have your company. Alan Jones for breakfast. Can you believe it? The most efficient food producers in the world. But no, mine it. In you go. Take it. Destroy it. Holy Nelly. Jones. I wonder whether that outfit will show some spine or simply rubber stamp this appalling waste. Alan Jones. These poor people just are hung out to dry. I mean, it's laughable. I mean, it doesn't even pass the laugh test. You've got a voice all right. We don't yield to these people. Alan Jones returns for breakfast Monday from 5.30 on 2GB, the power station. The de Bortoli family knows a lot about making great wine, and so they should. From when they first produced wine back in 1928 until now, the de Bortoli family continues to be recognised around Australia and around the world as a leading third-generation Aussie winemaker. And so it comes as no surprise that they've won a stack of wine medals and are the wine of choice for many fine hotels, airlines, leading restaurants and major events around the country. Life's too short to drink bad wine. Show your style. Choose de Bordley. Our great mates at China Eastern Airlines are flying daily to Shanghai and uh, over a thousand places around the world. Uh, they go just about everywhere, China Eastern Airlines, and they've got a fleet of very modern aircraft. In fact, one of the most modern aircraft fleets in the world. So the next time you're flying internationally, think China Eastern Airlines. They've got great deals on airfares too, wonderful deals on airfares. And uh, if you fly China Eastern before the end of March, you automatically go in the draw to win the opportunity to join me in China on uh, our fabulous uh, Shangri-La Dream of Shangri-La Tour in uh, June. So there we are. Somebody's going to win the opportunity to uh, to come along uh, simply by buying an international airfare with China Eastern Airlines. So check out their website for more information, China Eastern Airlines. Next time you're travelling internationally. Got to be seen at work? Right now there's high-vis deals on Volkswagen commercial vehicles with free on roads, cap price servicing, plus three-year unlimited kilometre warranty on Amarok, Caddyvan, Transporter and Crafter. Standout value like Amarok single cab TSI 300 manual with genuine alloy tray from 23990 drive away. Get a high-vis deal now. Head to highvisdeals.com.au. Available participating dealers for new stock vehicles only. Excludes Caddy Maxi Van in 31 March 2014 while stocks last. Not available with other offers. For full offer details, cap price servicing, warranty terms and conditions, visit volkswagen-commercial.com.au. Who cares about the children? The children. Who cares about us all? Us all. Who cares about the old prey? The deep The Australian Rotary Health Research Fund is holding community forums on mental health and funding health research in Australia by Australians. about tomorrow? Phone 1300 364 244 or visit our website. You're listening to The Clubhouse with Glenn Wheeler on 2GB873. Thanks to 50upclub.com. Yeah, if you're not a member yet, just uh, jump on the website, 50upclub.com, and register your details. I think there's up to, uh, they're up to about 70,000 uh, members now on the website, which uh, 50up club, it's wonderful. Moving rapidly, a little army building there. Um, it's said that um, the uh, property bubble is set to pop. US experts are saying uh, that their property bubble is about to pop, but we don't really have a bubble as such, as uh, we're led to believe. Um, there's an American economist, Harry S. Dent, in his new book, The Demographic Cliff, uh, which he's promoting in Australia next month. He makes special mention of Australia and says that house prices are unsustainable. Um, others are warning of a bubble in Australian house prices, but he identifies a possible deflation trigger. A crash in the Chinese housing market, he reckons that, that while Sydney and Melbourne house prices are, are high at almost 10 times income levels, 
The ratio is 35 times in the major Chinese city of Shenzhen. So just imagine that. Um, our pro- house price is 10 times uh, income levels on average. In uh, the Chinese city of Shenzhen, 35 times higher than the uh, income levels. He says, this is Harry S. Dent, he says that the collapse of Chinese housing prices will be the biggest housing crash in history and will cause commodity prices to rapidly fall and cause the fall of Australian house prices as well. Well, whether we're in a bubble or whether we're not in a bubble, uh, we're still continuing to get uh, pretty impressive uh, results at uh, at auction around the place and indeed uh, real estate sales in general. There's plenty of activity and nobody knows that better than Damien Cooley from Cooley Auctions who joins us once again on this Saturday night to give us a, a bit of a wrap of what happened today. G'day, Damo. Good evening, Glenn. Uh, how did we go today? Busy day again? Yeah, it feels like I'm just um, singing from the same songbook every single week, but we had another strong day in the market today. A clearance rate of 81% for us. We sold 35 out of 43. So our clearance rate uh, last week, you'd remember, was 74%. Seven, yeah. and we actually increased this week. So mm. it really feels like that the market is stronger right now than it was in 2013. I have heard uh, naysayers, uh, well, blokes like this, uh, this American economist and others, who aren't necessarily connected with the marketplace and aren't necessarily experts in anything other than just passing an opinion, saying, well, this is unsustainable. I mean, it can't go on forever. Yeah. And, I, and well, I guess it can't go on forever, obviously. The, the growth of what we saw last year and the growth of what we may well see this year is clearly is not going to be sustainable. However, what a lot of these people predict and what a lot of them go out and, on a limb and say that the market's going to crash, we're in this great bubble... I think if there's a couple of important points that you really need to consider, and, the, and probably the most important point of all of this, is that we're, we've got a growing population. Um, we in Sydney, Melbourne, major cities all around Australia. Um, these are places where people want to live. Mm. There is only so much real estate within close proximities to major CBDs. And the important thing is if you're an investor or if you're buying for a family home or whatever it might be, if you're buying good quality real estate in a good street, in a good suburb, it doesn't matter if you're paying 5 or 10% too much mm. above market now because if there ever is a downturn in any marketplace, you will always be able to get out of that good quality real estate. And I think where people sometimes find themselves caught up in this whole bubble idea is when they're buying not good quality real estate uh, on busy roads, might be south-facing, and it doesn't tick the boxes for an investor. So if you're making sure that you buy good quality real estate, uh, it's a good long-term investment. Yeah, and, and that's, you know, generally speaking, that's always been the story that, uh, uh, what was it, the uh, you know, the three Ps, position, position, position. Yeah, true, very true. Which is I, an... I know that uh, when, when you look at real estate, and, and many of the listeners listeners would be able to attest to this, that uh, if you look at where the real estate market has come from in the last 10 years and then in the last 20 and 30 and 40, uh, it's been a pretty good growth curve. Um, and that growth curve, in my view, will continue to rise. Now, listen, a, bird, a little bird tells me that you sold your own property during the week. Did you uh, auction that off or did somebody else auction it? Yeah, it was uh, it was an interesting interesting concept, actually, uh, <laughs> putting my own property to auction. And as the first property that I've actually sold, not myself as marketing and whatnot, but first property that... I've, I bought and uh, we sold it on Friday night. Did so you do the auction? It was a great result. Did you do the auction? No, I didn't. I didn't. Uh, my brother Andrew did the auction. He did a stunning job and uh, yeah, we were extremely pleased. Are, are there any constraints on uh, you or would there have been any constraints on you from auctioning it off? There wouldn't have been, would there? No. So you from, could have done real, if you... From a real estate agent's point of view, for example, if a real estate agent owns a property and they're going to market their own property, yep. you just need to declare agent's interest. So sometimes uh, you might see a, an advertisement, uh, whether it's online or in print on a brochure, and it might say agent's interest. Mm-hmm. That that generally means that the agent who's listed and selling the property has an interest in the sale of it. But from yep. an auctioneer's point of view, we're a third party. We're not involved in the sale. Yep, okay. So uh, were you happy with the auctioneer and did you thank him at the end and congratulate him or did you go and stick it up him and say, I wish you'd have got more for that? Yeah, no, no, he did a great <laughs> job. Um, we were really, really pleased. Well, we had 16 registered bidders at our house, so when you get that many people registered at your home, you know, it really is the best way to determine what market value is. Mm. And uh, he did a great job, so there you go. It was a good sale. And on Valentine's Day. Oh, how about that? 
How about That's that? A little bit of brotherly love, mate. Oh, you got to love that. And uh, hopefully there was enough money in it for you to go and buy a, a bottle of Australian uh, sparkling wine to celebrate. Yes, I should be. I should be pretty comfortable for the next little while, anyhow. Well, but we had some good sales out there in the market today. Good. Whereabouts? Uh, Give us a clue. A prop- yeah, we sold a property in 60 Mary Street in Surrey Hills. Um, that was marketed on by on behalf of LJ Hooker in a city. It had mm-hmm. a reserve of 1.2. We were expecting to possibly struggle a little bit to get to that price. Um, but we actually sold it under extremely competitive bidding for one million three hundred and forty thousand. Wow! So, yeah, there's some really good examples. Another apartment in Brook Street in Coogee, six of twenty Brook Street Coogee, marketed on behalf of Ray White Bono Junction, had a reserve of eight hundred and seventy-five, sold for nine hundred and eighty thousand. Um, we had another property at thirty William Street in Rockdale, marketed by Brooks Partners, that had a reserve of eight hundred thousand and sold for an unbelievable nine hundred and ninety-five thousand dollars. <laughs> with 22 registered bidders. Gosh, it's extraordinary. Yeah, yeah it's been good. Hey, listen, just in relation to, uh, just getting back to uh, the American economist, Harry S. Dent, for a minute, um, and his comments about, you know, the uh, the possible collapse of China housing prices being the biggest housing crash in history. It's interesting because I, uh, I don't know whether you've been up to China uh, at all or much, but um, I've been up there every year for the last four years and, uh, and a couple of times each time, and there's an enormous amount of uh, uh, development going on up there. And I know people who are up there involved in various industries who are, um, you know, in the, in the construction uh, business, building um, housing of all sorts of different types, retirement uh, concepts and all sorts mm. of things. There is a stack of, uh, of development going on in China, but there's a lot of people in China. I, for the life of me, actually can't imagine that, you know, the Chinese marketplace uh, is about to collapse in a hurry. I, it, it sometimes worries me a little bit more that, you know, you've got economists who profess to be experts on everything predicting something like that when well, when in fact you know i would have thought and i'm 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 trained in nothing but just looking at what's going on up there and knowing how many people live in the joint they need more housing built they do and there's a there's a couple of different markets here and when you look at the u.s market i mean the big the whole thing about this um subprime um crash and you know the u.s economy market um, going so poorly in for real estate over the past number of years is that you're able to walk into a bank, borrow money to buy a house, and if you decided that you didn't want to have the... This is a very basic description, but if you decided that you didn't want to have the house, you could walk back to the bank and give them the keys and say, thank you very much, goodbye, with no, with no, with um, nothing that said that you had to pay that money back. Yep. So the banks were throwing money at buyers and lending money, and so what... What actually happened in that situation is that that's why there were so many receiver sales and continue to be so mm. many receiver sales. Mm. Sydney's very different. The bank's not just throwing money at people that don't have the ability to pay that money back. In China, and it can be seen as, as partly scary, I, personally I haven't been, but a good friend of mine went to China recently on a bit of a study tour in the property industry, and, and he actually went through a city that he said to me was as big as Sydney CBD, that completely built, but did not have one person living in that city. Hmm. So it was built for almost the future, hmm. for people to move into it. So that idea and that concept can be quite scary um, because, you know, the development naturally that's gone on in many cities all throughout and around those regions hmm. is for future um, future people future, moving yeah. into those and, and that's a scary thought, but, yeah. you know, who knows? Yeah, future planning. Hey, listen, just in relation to auctions around Sydney too, and I often hear it said that you hear people comment about, uh, you know, the uh, the Chinese money. There's plenty of Chinese money around. What's your, you're there. You're not just uh, mm. making comment. You're actually out there. Out of uh, 81% of, of uh, properties that sold under the hammer today, how many of them sold to, uh, you know, offshore uh, or, or foreign uh, owners? Yeah, it's a good question. Uh, I wouldn't know that statistic off the top of my head, but what I can say is that there is definitely um, an increased volume of overseas purchasers who are buying real estate. Uh, I had a couple of situations today where I know that I had purchasers who were bidding from overseas, uh, Singapore in one instance, and and that purchaser uh, wasn't here and they were looking at buying from an investment point of view. So there's definite money that's coming from overseas markets into Australia, but I think that that's a healthy thing for, for our country. I think it's a healthy thing for our economy. And, uh, you know, we encourage it naturally. There, there are more properties being sold to overseas purchases now, for example, than there may have been a couple of years ago. Hmm. 
no doubt. Uh, there, there's been some certain statistics being thrown around on percentages, but uh, I think that ultimately when you look at it, you know, mums and dads who are Australians looking to buy real estate definitely um, have a, a great uh, opportunity to get in the market and buy good quality stuff. And, and the whole concept of Chinese money and, and this is, you know, can sometimes get thrown out of proportion um, and we just need to be realistic about what properties are worth and, and don't well, that's go above it. your means. That's it, and that's what scares people, I suppose. The fact that sometimes uh, people from other parts of the world that have got bucket loads of dough will just come and dump uh, big lumps of money at an auction just to buy something when uh, the uh, the young couple have their hearts that can't go, you know, another $1,000. Yeah, well, I mean, it's different life. to any other live market, that's like right. the stock market. Yep. Prices go up, prices come down, and the great thing about Australian real estate is it's a a good quality investment, a relatively low risk investment, mm. um, and, you know, therefore the yields um, uh, reflect that as well. Right, good to talk to you, mate. Thanks, Glenn. Damien Curley, Curley Auctions. 2GB traffic, thanks to Palmer's Glass. For your shower screens, contact Palmer's Glass. biggest sale ends tomorrow. Get 20 to 30% off all tiles, pavers and stone. Don't miss out. Only one place brings it all together. Amber has the answer. You could spend your weekend driving around to different car dealers or you could avoid the hassle and head straight to Car City. Car City is like a shopping mall for car buyers. With around 40 dealers all competing for your business, there's simply no better place to drive a bargain. So save your money and your weekend. Come to Car City. Open seven days a week at 591 Carlisle Avenue, Minchinbury. And... Now, if you're still celebrating Valentine's Day, then I couldn't think of a better bottle of wine to celebrate with than a bottle of De Bortoli, be it a red or a white or a sparkling. They make fabulous wine, and they're wonderful sponsors of ours on a Saturday night. We love De Bortoli, makers of great Australian wine since 1928, the De Bortoli family. The office tea room, a sugar jar full of lumps, instant sawdust pretending to be coffee, and then there's the tea. Where's it from? How does it taste? If you're reaching for anything except Majura, you're missing out on the best tasting tea bag in Australia, as voted by CanStar Blue two years running. Insist on 100% Australian owned Majura tea for your tea room. Majura tea, available at Coles, Woolworths and all leading supermarkets. Majura, it's Australia's cup of tea. Ingenious solutions and innovative products. Kensington offers more than just your run-of-the-mill accessories to protect and secure your smart devices. They provide considered, stylish and well-engineered products to enhance your interaction with technology. Get more from your smart device with a great range of Kensington products, from tablet keyboards and cases to laptop bags and locks. What does that mean for you? Well, it just means that Kensington will make it work better. Kensington.com. Smart. Safe. Simple. You're listening to The Clubhouse with Glenn Wheeler on 2GB873. Thanks to 50upclub.com. I've often been in the city, in the CBD here in Sydney, and I've seen uh, groups of people wandering around following a tour guide that's uh, wearing a bright green T-shirt that says uh, something about join me for a free tour or I'm free or something along those lines. So I thought I'd explore it a little bit more and I discovered I'm free tours. Literally, I'm free tours, uh, run by a couple, Justine and Ross, um, who, um, uh, well, by their own admission, are seasoned travellers um, who just enjoy taking people around for tours, for free, believe it or not. Ross Pickrell joins us on the line to tell us more about it. G'day, Ross. Hi, Glenn. How are you going? I'm good. Now, so it's you and uh, and Justine, your partner, who started this business up. Why? Where did you get the idea from? Uh, we we travelled around Europe uh about six years ago now and found similar sort of free pay what you think it's worth tours all over there and we really enjoyed going on them and we were like we came back home and we love sydney and we're like what better way to show it off so the concept is that it's promoted as a, it's a free tour i'm free uh but you explain to people from what i gather that 
when the, the before the tour starts, you explain that whilst it's a free tour, if you enjoy it, you can tip us. Yeah, exactly. We hope that if people like it, they'll leave us with something as to what they thought it was worth, and yeah, opens it up to anyone to come along. What a great concept. So uh, you uh, you run a, a variety of tours each day, and you operate pretty much every day of the week. Give us a bit of a, a snapshot of what it's all about. Um, we do we do like a Sydney sites tour, which takes gives a good overview and orientation of the city with lots of interesting stories and history from Town Hall all the way down through the city, uh, finishing up with Sydney's main icons. Uh, and then we do a tour around the rocks at 6 o'clock every evening, which covers more the sort of murders and mysteries about that historical area. I was reading on your website uh, some of the, the feedback from uh, people that have been on the tours. One lady from, I forget where she was from now, from but you know some other part of the world, and she said she she said I'm still reflecting on uh, the wonderful tour that you gave us and some of the fabulous information that we uh, we gleaned from you. Information which we couldn't have possibly got had we have just you know been sitting on a bus or something like that. So you really must go into some some detail to tell people what they're experiencing, what they're seeing. Yeah, no, we. We try and cover thing, things that we find interesting and about Sydney and also ways that people can make the most out of their time here because there's so much that mm. people... It's hard for people to find out without sort of a local to tell them and show them what to do. And on foot, you know, it's the old story. Doing something like this on foot, you're going to see much more as you wander around the place on foot. Yeah, there's plenty of places we can get to that you just can't get to otherwise yeah exactly now the tours last two and a half to three hours so they're quite extensive tours when you uh, when you finish the tour and you wrap it all up um how often do you get people that just sort of slink away without paying uh you get that a little bit um uh, not not too often, so it keeps it all working for everyone. Um, it's it's but, interesting. So, yeah. so on average, uh, you know, you're comfortable. You're making a a living. You're you're paying your bills, and um, the 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 price that people pay, I guess, varies from person to person and group to group. Exactly, and that's we wanted to be able to show anyone traveling on any budget, local traveler, anyone to show off our city. Um, and yeah, hopefully they'll enjoy it and. They'll want to leave us with something extraordinary. Have you had the uh, you know the blow me away tip from the, uh, the the hey big spender from America or somewhere that's tried to slip a hundred dollars in your pocket? Uh, I think the most I've had was fifty, but it was someone that only came on a third of the tour. So wow, maybe that's equivalent to one hundred and fifty. Wow, <laughs> See, that's pretty impressive. It, it was it was a big surprise. Yeah, good stuff. Rain, hail, or shine, and you work every day of the year except Christmas Day, right? Yep, exactly. Um, do you find that? Uh, what about the, uh, the the clientele? Are they uh, are they from all over the place, including locals? Yep, yeah, yep. Yeah. We get people from all over the world. I think I toured my first people from Morocco the other day. Hmm. Um, but yeah, and we get lots of locals as well, particularly with friends or family who are out travelling. Yeah. Um, because they're like, well. Go do this tour. Oh, wait, we should probably come along as well. Yeah, exactly. We live in this city, but, you know, we've never really explored it properly and found out all about it, and that's, it's yeah. something that I think we should all do from time to time, just be a tourist in our own city. Well done to you guys. It's, uh, it's obviously working well, and you're operating in Melbourne now as well. Yes, yeah, yeah, yeah. Started down there a little over a year ago, and we've got locals to Melbourne down there trying to show off Melbourne and say that it's better than Sydney. <laughs> <laughs> Good stuff. I'm free.com.au. Is that the website? Yes. I'm free.com.au. Uh, Ross, thanks for chatting to us. No problems. Have a great weekend. Good on you. You too. And uh, a clever initiative too. A great way to show people around this magnificent city. I'm free too as uh, the people just meet outside the town hall twice a day, 10.30 in the morning and 2.30 in the afternoon. And then um, uh, Justine and Ross explain what it's all about. They're about to go on a two and a half hour to three hour walking tour. And at the end of it, if you've enjoyed it, then um, we're happy for you to tip us. And that's how they earn their, their quid. Good concept.